Okay, so this is an overview of how uh, the Rainbow Six Siege Twitch drone, uh, Twitch shock drone, uh, how I built it and how it works. So um, let's just start off with operation. Uh, I've got the gauntlet here, gauntlet control here, and the drone here. So turn on the gauntlet. Bam, we've got video feed. Yay, video feed. And we've got a joystick control here and a couple of push buttons. So joystick forward, joystick back, joystick turn left, turn right. Okay, and so of course we got the video link. And then I put in a couple extra things. So there's a bicolor red green LED right there you can see. So green means it's connected to the controller. Red means it's uh, awaiting a connection. Um, there's, if you can see right there, there's the actual camera itself. And then I've got a few other options. So for the camera, I've got a white LED installed uh, that I can activate via button press. Uh, and that just lights up the scene in case I need some more lighting. Uh, and then for the shock effect, I'm using a flashing blue LED uh, seizure warning. So that's kind of the general uh, general uh, operation of it. The gauntlet lasts about an hour, and um, just like feeding video and then driving around. Uh, the drone itself, if I drive it straight, just straight at max speed, probably 30 minutes. I haven't really optimized the power budget of these, and the motors themselves are fairly power hungry. Um, so yeah, let's get into the meat of it, and I'll show you how it works. Um, this, the actual like gauntlet portion uh, that fits around on my hand, this is made of uh, just Kydex, which is used in... Um, gun holsters so I just it, it's a thermoplastic so you can just cut it and it's think of it as like industrial strength warbler it, it's it's a hard thermoplastic and then I just put some elastic bands on the back to kind of make it look like how twitch has it in game uh, but really it just keeps it nice and tight around my arm it's kind of a pain to get on but it holds really well the gauntlet itself or the controller itself is uh, completely custom. The only um, so the housing's custom, uh, custom 3D printed. All the electronics inside are custom, except for the video screen. So the video screen is actually an FPV watch, and it's a G King uh, T909, I think it is. So it's um, it's an off-the-shelf FPV watch. Uh, now, if I can actually get it opened up, I will show you how it is inside. So the the watch itself provides all the power to the controller itself. I've just tapped off uh, some power from the internal battery, and uh, it might be a pain in the butt to get off. So I will try my best, but I can't guarantee anything. There we go. So yeah, it provides power um, and. Uh, there's a couple of power two put push buttons on the side, so there's power on and off and channel selection. That's for the FPV watch. So if I hold down the channel button, it powers off the whole system, including the actual uh, controller section. And holding power on will power it back up. Uh, I've got a micro USB port right here for charging the system. Uh, and then the push buttons themselves, they're, they're normal through-hole push buttons, but uh, I've got, this was a little last minute, I've got them extended out with some screws and nuts here to act as like push button extenders. And, uh, okay, this is being kind of a pain in the butt to get off, so don't know if I'll actually be able to show you anything. Um, but I will include photos. So underneath this is a uh, NRF... 52832 um, Adafruit uh, Feather Module. And um, that is a full Bluetooth sock and uh, controller. So it, it's, it runs like an Arduino-esque uh, stack on it. 
so I can program it and it'll have direct Bluetooth low energy connection. Then three push buttons and a PSP style joystick. And so that goes on a uh, perf board inside and that just fits the FPV watch in there. It's all screwed together in this 3D printed housing I made. I need to update it because it's not quite game accurate, but the important functions are kind of in the right place, like the joysticks to the left, the screens to the right, the buttons are to the top, that sort of thing. So there's the controller. <coughs> Excuse me. The drone itself, the uh, only thing that isn't custom in this drone is the 3D printed housing. I found a creator on Thingiverse who had already modeled uh, Twitch's drone and I will link to it in, in the comments or in, in the link of this video. Uh, they did an excellent work. It looks great in game. I did do a couple of modifications to the model itself. So I scaled everything up by like 1.2 because it fits better and it, it seems more screen accurate. Uh, at uh, 1.2 scale from the model I got and then I just had to fill in some holes uh, that uh, my uh, 3d printing software didn't quite like um, but this is all just PLA PLA with um, I did uh, XTC 3d so as soon as it came out of the printer I removed all the supports and everything and cleaned it up as best I could sanded it a little bit here and there and used XTC 3D, which is kind of a clear epoxy you can apply over it. Uh, and then once that's done, I just painted it over. I masked the individual parts and painted it over with acrylic uh, crafting paint. Well, you can just get it at Joann's. It's, it's really cheap stuff. It's, it's pretty much like this stuff. So I used a few different combinations and masked them off. So like blue, gray, black, um, and gray again for the wheels. Uh, the stickers themselves, I designed those in paint, so there's a, there's a good look at them. They are screen accurate. I, I found, uh, I got a good screenshot of what they look like in game. And so they actually, you know, read how they're supposed to So you know, warning, electric chalk hazard, blah, blah, blah. So I just printed those out as labels. I painted everything and I've left like an opening in the paint so I could just glue it down and like force it into the cracks and it, it looks decently well uh, so yeah the wheels themselves they're screwed in with a coupler if you remove the top hood you'll actually see the electronics the top hood kind of holds the electronics in place with these two screws into the rest of the housing and then these four mounting screws that actually cut uh, hold into the custom PCB I made so this is the custom PCB I made it's again a sa the exact same like Adafruit NRF5382 <coughs> Excuse me uh, Bluetooth module um, So I loaded up some code on there uh, Here's the two Let's get some light on here. Here's the two motor drivers These are text instruments uh, DRV8850 um, uh, The audio cut out here, but uh, they're being controlled by the Adafruit uh, feather module there and uh, those two motor dri drivers drive the left and right motors there. And those are Pololu uh, GM9, GM2 uh, gear motors, I believe they are. Um, they draw quite a bit of current, uh, so that's why the motor drivers were needed. Um, and so in the middle there is the pr battery protection circuitry. Since I'm using an unprotected 18650 uh, lithium ion battery, um, it couldn't fit a protected 18650, so I provided that in so it doesn't over discharge the battery or anything like that. So there's the 18650, um, and that just fits in right between the motors themselves. Uh, so for the other peripherals, the uh, Adafruit Feather also controls all the LEDs, and the board provides power to the camera module there. Uh, the camera module is a crazy pony. Um, 25 milliwatt uh, mini AOI FPV camera, I think it was called, and it's it's tiny. It's about the size of a dime, uh, but it gets pretty hot, so that draws power right off of the battery.
it's a tiny, tiny camera and like the size of a dime. So that's fit in there, and that is um, epoxied in there. I couldn't use super glue bec or a hot glue because uh, the camera gets pretty hot. Um, so it would just melt the soup or hot glue. So that wouldn't work. <coughs> um, so the front panel is a separate piece and I had to hot glue that in there, but it, it works pretty well. It looks all right. Um, yeah. So there's the motors there. They go to the couplers and then I added a little ball roller ball on the back so that it could just roll across and it works well. Uh, a problem I had towards the end of this is that while it would turn great, it would have trouble like going forward and back. So two ways I solved this is um, I used what is called uh, Flex Seal. So it's like a rubberized spray. And I sprayed all the wheels here just to give them better grip. And then with that, I found some, I found like five dollar coins <coughs> they're dollar coins but i found five of the, five of them and see that yellow electric tape in there they're all wrapped up together wrapped in electrical tape and then hot glued in there just to give it some weight on the wheels so it's actually get, uh, putting some gravity onto the wheels and so the wheels can actually get some grip um, but that turned out really well, and it drives uh, really well. I, the worst thing that it drives on is carpet, and it doesn't back up too well, but it drives just nice. Flat, smooth surfaces like this, or concrete, or metal, just fine. Um, I think that's about it. That's how I made it. Uh... So, audio cut out again. Uh, the board itself, I custom designed, um, and then I got it fabricated through... PCB way, which is a custom PCB uh, fab house. Uh, I assembled the components themselves. I got all the components from DigiKey, and some of them are really tiny, like the grain, size of a grain of rice, so they were a pain in the butt to assemble. But uh, overall, it just turned out to be a more elegant solution, and turns out to be much cleaner than 10 kilometers of internal wiring, as Twitch would put it.